Hi, everybody. It is time for Tuesday Night Live with Rick and Brett from Cairo Destiny. Uh, and before we start, we would be remiss if we didn't um, sort of pay a little tribute to a dear friend of ours, a, a dear chiropractor, a superstar in our profession, Dr. Tom Clapp, who uh, tra tragically passed away yesterday. Yeah, he was, uh, you know, I believe, and I would call him an icon and leader in our profession for many years. He was a board member, been involved with the ICA for many years, sat on the board of Life U, Life University. He did a lot of stuff for Life University. And, and uh, one of his claims to fame, I thought was just unbelievable. He helped to bring multiple associations together in the state of Michigan to form one really strong association. And they became a very powerful association over the years. And he was very instrumental in doing that. So good friend of ours, good friends of, of Cairo Destinies. We had just interviewed him a couple of months ago. As a matter of fact. months ago, he, um, yeah. he talked about one chiropractic that he helped create, yep. um, uh, NBC, Neurologically Based Chiropractic. Um, so if you didn't have a chance to know Tom, just know that there are uh, people that stood before us that started a little bit before us that have really um, taken on not the role of just helping uh, individual patients in a community, but to believe in uh, the principle of what we all stand for, but was willing to stand up and fight for it, uh, travel the country, travel the world on behalf of our great profession. So to to Kim, uh, his wife, and to their, their beautiful family, um, obviously our, our thoughts and our prayers and our condolences. Yeah. And a, as I had, I had texted to Kim, um, you know, Tom leaves a torch that we are happy and honored to pick up and continue to, uh, to, to leave his legacy in good hands and do everything we can to honor the hard work that he did. And uh, they are having a Memorial Scholarship Fund at Life University in Tom's name. So for those of you who wanna donate, um, you could do that through Life University. I think Kim also posted on her Facebook page as well. So Kim and Tori, you know, our hearts and prayers go out to you guys. Um, time will definitely be missed, so. Yeah. Uh, so in, in transition to that, the topic that we have tonight is report of findings. And that I would say is probably the most misunderstood, <laughs> the most controversial, the most studied, um, what we arguably say is the most important procedure in a chiropractic office, because it is the time that you get to explain to the patient what your findings are, let them know the care plan and get them started on a road, hopefully, the way we see it, on a road starting lifetime chiropractic care, not just getting them started for pain relief, but to get them to understand what it is that we do, why we do it, how we do it, and get them started on really a road back to understanding that the body's a self-healing, self-regulating or organism and needs specific adjustments to get the uh, get the body back to where it's uh, supposed to go. Uh, by the way, Kimberly just put up the alumni scholarship for Tom Platt. So all you have to do is click on the link if you want to donate, which we certainly did already. So, yep. um, so Brett, yeah. report of findings, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like this multifaceted approach that people just get absolutely bananas over. Um, it's probably, as you mentioned, the most, not the most, but one of the most significant, important factors in building a chiropractic practice. Um, and I think it gets blown out of proportion in a lot of ways. I think there's a lot of misnomer behind all this. So let's try to break it down and simplify, because I think that's really the key. To me, it's a one-two punch from ending the first day going into the second day. And, and I think before we start, because I, I, I always get this sense of, all right, some chiropractor clicks on and says, all right, let me hear what these two dudes have to say. Yeah. Basically, why do you get to talk about report of findings? Why, what makes yours so good? Well, you know, what? Well, you know, why do you think you know better than anyone? And here's what I'll tell you. Brett's PVA is in the 90s and mine's in the 60s. And we've been doing it for 20 something years. Yeah. And, and, and show me a lot of people that have a higher PVA that right. are out there still doing it. And right. I'll listen to them. Right. So, you know, we're, we're, we're still doing it. We right. did report a findings today. I, I, I just, I did one earlier today. Absolutely. Right. Right. Yeah, and by the way, I'm not saying we're the only ones and we're the our way is the only way. It's a way that has worked for me, I can say, for 29 years, and my close rate is about 95%. And when I say close rate, everybody's different. I'm not going to tell you how, how you have to practice. 
In my practice, we do one-year care plans because I believe in corrective care. Um, we talk about the three phases of care. And my whole thing is how can we correct the spine you know, optimally so we can get the nervous system functioning at its optimal best, get people out of pain if they're in pain, correct, stabilize, and strengthen the spine and get them to the point of, to the beginnings of maintenance or wellness care. And then we go from there. I believe it on average from all the research and all the things I've seen, depending on your technique. Now, some techniques are a little bit different. I do mainly diversified, a little bit of Gonstead, a little bit of activator. Um, but I believe in what I've seen doing before and afters and progress exams and re-x-rays and everything else. It takes the spine probably anywhere between 10 to 14 months to really correct. So your technique, maybe you get it done faster than that. Some techniques maybe be more than that. Um, I'm not telling you how to practice. I'm not telling you what technique. So whatever works for you, you know, and, and you have to follow your state laws in terms of what you can offer for care plans and things of that nature as well. But really the, the bottom line is, is there's a couple of things that we have to talk about. Number one is understanding who the person is in front of you. I think that's important. And Rick, there's no one better than you in terms of building rapport, understanding personality types and your, and your, and your ability to communicate with people. And we'll get to that in just a moment. Um, so it's about building rapport, knowing the personality type in front of you, knowing what to say. Um, we talk about basically everything revolves around the four questions, which we'll get to in a moment as well. We'll break all that down. So I think that if you follow a success formula, I think it will really work. And I think the more confidence you have, the more certainty you have, and your, and your ability to communicate and build rapport will certainly help you increase your close rate, as well as the um, you have something to offer them in the form of a care plan or something that you can prepare in advance for that individual based on what the individual needs by telling them what they need, not what they want to hear necessarily, and coming at it from simply what's in their best interest. And I think if you're honest, you're upfront, and you have these things in place, you'll absolutely, because we've all done it, you'll absolutely increase. And I don't like to use the word close per se, but that's what it is. You're, you're closing patients, but you're inculcating them into your practice and more importantly, into the profession of chiropractic and how it can change their life. Unfortunately, sure. most people are afraid to do that. Right. And we don't have the time to sit here and do every single thing, but we did right. pull some linchpin things that you may not understand. You may not be doing. Let's see what we can do to help. As you know, um, there's always an offer to help you in more detail with Chiro Destiny, but for starters, we have to transition from day one into day two. Yeah. And so day one, we went over, I think, last time, or we, we talked about um, some of the PVA skills, et cetera. But you, let's say you do a date, a great day one, you do a consult, you do examination, you do diagnostics, you do uh, palliative therapy if you do it, whatever. You don't adjust. <laughs> it's a whole other story, but let's right. say you don't adjust, yeah. but you're setting up this day two procedure. One of the things that we think most people don't do right is they don't at the end of day one, whether it's the after lunchtime or at the end of the night, is prepare the patient's file for the ROF. Yeah. Some of you just throw, you know, you throw it back into the thing, and now all of a sudden, you know, John Smith walks in, you're looking at the x-rays for the first time when the patient's walking in. It's got to requ it requires some prep. And that prep means you're looking at the patient's forms. You're looking at the history that you wrote down or you typed in. You're looking at their films if you took them. You're looking at substation scans if you took them. You're looking at posture pictures if you took them. You're looking at foot scans if you took them. And you're starting, trying to create this mental picture of how am I gonna take John Smith from where he is now to ultimate health and wellness for the rest of his life. And therefore, you're going to, we believe you should use a written report of findings. Definitely. Some sort of written packet. Yes, the, the patient always read it. Maybe, yes, maybe they throw it out. It's not the point. But some sort of written packet that could be backtalk systems. It could be patient media. You use Ted Corin's booklet. Yeah. You can make up your own. We don't care. But some sort of nicely presented folder that has their scans in it, that has concepts in it that you can go through where you mark x-ray findings, you give a care plan, you talk about phases of degeneration, all the things we'll talk about as part of the linchpins. And it is done in advance. So when the patient comes for the ROF, you are ready, you have studied, and you already know that you are saying yes to this patient 
you're accepting him for care in your office, and you already know the continuum of what this patient's going to go through. Absolutely. So the more prepared you are in advance, I like to walk into a report of finding so well prepared that I don't need anything in front of me for that particular individual because I know so well because I've studied it. I see it. It's boom, boom, boom. And I have the confidence and certainty walking in and that translates to the patient. And then there's that exchange. But let's take it a step back for a moment. I just want to be clear on a couple of things. I think that it's really important. The concept is at the end of day one, the whole idea is to set them up for day two. If you do a really good job in day one, you don't have to sell them anything. It sells itself. It's easy. Day two is actually easier than you think. But so the key concept is it's about, we like to say, reframing them and future pacing them, right? So we say, you know, pre-frame them in terms of what we're all about, which is health and wellness, but it's reframing the patient away from pain and more about function. So feeling versus function, right? So if we say the object of today is to determine what's causing your problem in, in a nutshell, right? And, I, and I've been working with this one office, they have four doctors in it. And for the last couple of weeks, I've been drilling them and drilling them about what to say, how to say it, how to handle, right? And now all of a sudden their acceptance rates are starting to go, back, to go up because they're starting to get the concept, but reframing them towards, right? function versus feeling away from pain. And so when you simply say to the patient, the object is, this is what we're going to do. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to evaluate your spine from top to bottom. We're going to check your whole spine. We're going to check for misalignments. We're going to check your nervous system. We're going to scan this. We're going to do that, blah, 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 blah. And once we know what's causing the problem, then we're going to start to focus on correcting the problem. And Mrs. Jones, we've got two choices. We can, can you can continue down the path you're on, which is treating the symptoms only, or we can take a new path, which is focusing on correcting the cause of the problem, right? Which would you prefer? And I've never had anybody say other than I want to correct the problem. And so again, you're starting to get them the concepts of the nervous system and the spine and so forth. So by the time you get to day two, it's kind of a slam dunk. So it's a good way to start anyway. And I don't want to give all our secrets away and do it all. We don't have the time to do that right now, but just to get the, the main concepts. Right. And, and just before we flip over to the next thing, could you talk about the physiology of state management before you walk into the ROM? Yeah, I mean, I take it back. So, you know, usually we're running around like lunatics to just a million people, whatever. So if I'm going to do a report of findings, I duck into my office for about 30 seconds to a minute and I just do a quick review. But I get myself into state, which is and, and in my mind, it's like, OK, how can I connect with the patient? I envision, I know this is going to sound stupid, but you asked, I, I will tell. I envision my heart connecting with their heart together, right? And, I'm, and I don't go in like, I'm, I'm going in with, uh, with a sword, like, hey, over the hill, let's go get them. Unbelievable. It's right. I go in with, how can I change this person's life? How can I be so honest with them that they want this because they can see how they're going to live a much healthier, happier life by doing what we're doing? because we know it's most important to them. And because I'm so well prepared, it's just a no brainer. So I just stop for a moment. I get myself into healing mode and I just, you know, I just close my eyes for a moment, you know, kind of, and just kind of get into this mode. And I just say, talk to myself a little bit. Okay, what can I do to change their life? And once I get to that point, I calm myself down. I walk in with a, with a healing energy. Hey, I've got great news for you. We found what we believe to be the cause of your problem. And then we take it from there. And that's the outcome. It's a conversation. It's not a beat them over the head, sell, sell, sell. And that's, that. that's the whole thing. And, and we got to stop at this point for one sec. Sure. You said that like people go in like, all right, especially new docs. All right, right. You know, I got this ROF. I'm going to get them. I'm going to get them. I'm yeah. going to close this. It's the wrong physiology. It's the yeah. wrong headspace whatsoever. Yeah. Report of findings is a conversation. It is not your time to lecture to someone for 25 minutes. You know, it's, it's a, this is what you came to me for. I found what is the cause of your problem. I am accepting you as a case. And this is what we need to do about it. It is not this crazy, you know, go after you, force you to do something. This is about having a two-way convo, which means if you're going to have a two-way convo, you have to ask some questions in between. And the question can't be, does that make sense? Do you understand? Because they're always going to give you the chiropractic head fake. Oh, that. <laughs> yes, you're talking about neuropathophysiology. Yes, I understand. They have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. But 
if you use analogies and you use metaphors and Bill S. Deb's book, uh, 50 Ways, yep. another patient media favorite, is you should have an arsenal of metaphors and analogies at your fingertips so any patient you're talking in front of can understand what you're talking about. Yep. Sometimes the science and the biomechanics doesn't make sense, but if you bring it into a world that they can understand, now the light bulb goes off. Well, again, so if you, you care about who they are, right, so if you know who they are, you know what they do for a living, you know, you know their personality type, we prepare that in advance. So if we know all these things, we cater the report of findings to who they are. Right. So, so if I have a dental they, assistant that came in the other day, right? I'm talking all, you know, dental analogies, right? I'm talking, you know, cavities. And it's, no, it's easy. It's no brainer. So the key is, is to know who they are. What's the most important thing to them and relate it to that. And that, that, that's how you do it. That's how you establish rapport and good yep. communication skills. So now, you came up with my favorite thing in the report of findings, which is the 54321. Mm -hmm. So just give them a little taste of there are five things that you go over in the report of findings. Five, four, three, two, one. Hit me. So it's it's pretty easy. Again, it's just for people to remember. But I like, you know, the five tests to go over. So it's the, you know, your exam findings. We do scans, nerve system scans, x-rays. We do foot leveler scans. Uh, what else do we do? Orthopedic right? tests. Yeah, all that stuff. So, so these five tests, it's a quick review. So my report of findings probably is about 10 to 12 minutes. If they're a driver, it's probably a little bit less. I skip all of that. And if they're analytical, maybe a little bit longer. But the whole, whole thing is probably about 10 or 12 minutes. Including, so we'll closing, including the care plan. Yeah. Or have, or have somebody else do the care plan. Right? But the five tests you go over, let them know they're in the right place. So I think so we don't overwhelm them, but just to let them know, here's what we found, here's what's going on, that kind of thing, right? So then we then then the next thing, so it's if you count it down, five, four, three, two, one, four is answering the four questions. This is just a way to remember what to do during the report of findings, right? So the four questions very simply are, you know, can we help them? What's wrong with them? How long will it take to correct? And how much will it cost? So that gets addressed very simply, right? Then we talk about the three phases of care, initial intensive, corrective, and wellness. Very simple. Then we talk forms of agreement, right? What you can expect from me, what I expect from you. And finally, the one close or the one, here's what it is, which option is best for you. So if you just kind of remember that and then just cater it to the individual, you really can't go wrong. It's just a nice way of getting into it, knowing what to do and say. Right. So I want to take two different parts of that and and talk about some of the things that you've added that I've adopted that have changed my, not only my close rate, my PVA and how easy it is to get patients educated is yeah. when you originally talked about the three phases of care, mm -hmm. you added a fourth phase of care, which I thought mm -hmm. was brilliant. So everyone talks about the initial intensive care for, okay, Mrs. Jones, you have symptoms. You're going to be here every day or three times a week. We're going to get you feeling better. It takes about two to six weeks, blah, blah, blah. The rehabilitative care, that's where you're going to spend most of your time because you've never had chiropractic care before. You have phase two degeneration. You operate a jackhammer you know, for a living, and it's going to take X amount of time to get your spine stabilized, symmetry back into the muscles, tendons, and ligaments, the rehabilitative care. Then we talk about maintenance. More corrective care. Right. So we talk about maintenance or wellness or prevention, you know, prevention. But the other part, this fourth phase, is this neural optimizing phase, right? This performance optimizing, this optimum nervous system that I love because it took the conversation away from my pain, my, my bones, my muscles, my tendons, and my ligaments, sure. and got it yeah. into nerves. And if you want yeah. your practice to be more wellness oriented, you've got to get past spinal curve correction and into nerve system optimization. Because yep. once you get that post X-ray and once I have my curve back, I don't need you anymore. Right. Or not you could do maintenance care maintain. to maintain that. Right. That's that's the maintenance. But the next that's step, when they understand, right. So the next step after that, as you said, is understanding that the whole thing is really based on the neural component, right? Go. Brain based and everything else. When they, when a when a patient really gets to that part and gets it, then they've got. It. Then you got to go up. You got to go right. 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 That's your Tom Clapp stuff. Yeah. And that's your, you know, your Dan Sullivan. I mean, we've, we've, uh, we've talked about it so many times. And the other thing that I will contend 
that we understood long time before and we do the majority spend our spend our time in the report of findings on is your office policy. Yep. So doctors, you want to know the number one thing people do wrong in a report of findings? They make it a lecture and they don't make it conversational. And you spend all your time trying to turn a patient into a radiologist. You spend all this time showing them their films and explaining their films and going over the films. They have no idea what you're talking about anyway. And now the CA is knocking on your door because you got six other people there and you never get to your office policy. You never explain to them this form of agreement of you, this is your care plan. You have to make up your visits if you miss them. You can't just not show and not call. We have a new patient orientation video that you need to watch or some of you that still do your healthcare classes in person. We expect you to take care of your financial responsibility by picking which option. You can expect us to run on time. You can expect us to be thorough. You can expect us to tell you the truth. You can expect us, we have multiple doctors. You can choose which practitioner you prefer. Most people don't have a preference. They just like to be able to get in and get out and have the easiest experience. All of that conversation needs to be 50% of this conversation. And you make it about 2% because you're so busy showing them x-rays. Or the, in, addition, in addition to that, I should say, and people get so caught up in the, let me show you how smart I am as the doctor, clinical stuff, and patients don't even understand it anyway. You got to dumb it down. And I don't mean because they're dumb. It's just, you don't need to get into all that. You know, Less is I, you to, you're overwhelming them. Just to answer the four questions. I can help you. Here's what's going on. Here's how long it'll take. Here's how much it's going to cost. Pick which option is best for you. And let's get started. Let's change it. Now you can utilize some of that smart stuff for your yeah. visit to visit patient education. And you'll right. take them along the curriculum of education. You don't have to dump it into them on day one. Their leg is killing them. They have sciatic and torticollis. And you're, they can't hear you. They just want to be fixed. That's right. right? That's right. So if you're struggling with the report of findings, give it, call us. We will help you. We will coach you because you need to, what people don't understand is how to start somebody off. What's the frequency? How long do I keep them at that frequency? When do I reduce them down? When have they gone from, you know, initial intensive care? When is it time for corrective care? What do I do doing corrective care? What do I say to them? How do I bring them along a continuum visit by visit? to go from where they are now to get them to lifetime wellness care. How do I do this? What do I say? And this is the stuff that we coach people on. We're giving you the kind of the overall concepts tonight, but the, but the day one, we teach you how to set it up. We teach you what questions to ask. We teach you how to end it properly. So it's a setup for day two. So when they come back for day two, it makes more sense. It's easy to get start care. It's, it's light. It's easy. It's not overwhelming. And it's easy to say yes. And the other thing too, is if you have the right, care plans and the right structure to your financial obligations to make it really easy for someone to start care and giving them some multiple options, right? And packages and so forth. It, the easier you make it, the easier it is for them to start and stay under chiropractic care. Um, if you check, Kimberly just put in this report of findings checklist as a free giveaway. So there is a link over there. Hi, Dr. Winwer. Nice to see you there, buddy. Um, so we have... This is what we follow, this, this checklist. And especially if you don't currently do the written report of findings, you don't currently do the 54321, you don't currently do the office policy. It's all listed there so you don't miss anything. And what we suggest you do is you do your ROF. You, as soon as you come out, you grade yourself. I got this, I forgot this, I missed this. Well, how can I do it better next no, time? Do. So for our coaching clients, we actually make you record your report of findings and send it to us. We listen to it and we review it with you. And we may do that two, three, four times with you until it is, you know, perfected, or at least it got to a point of some serious expertise and it's really doing well. Sometimes you don't even realize what you're saying. You think you're saying one thing and then doing another. But when we have you record it, we make you listen to it first. Then we listen to it and then we grade you or we work on it together week after week until we tweak and we fix and we improve. And then after a while, once you got it down, Right. As we said, it's the probably the most important procedure in your practice, but it's the least understood and people just lack a preparation for it. They don't prepare enough in advance to have the best outcome that you want. But that is that is so key, as we mentioned before, you have to prep in advance. You have to prep them and you have to really give them um, 
you know, a personalized written report of findings. We put their name on it. Where there's a page in there where we circle all where their subluxations are, what part of the nervous system is being infected, but we write notes, we mark it up, and it's personalized. And when they see it, they're more apt to read it and go through it. When you just overwhelm them with brochures and different reading materials, they're not going to read it. But when it's personalized for them and you show them exactly what's going on, they're more apt to read it and understand it, by the way, too. Right. And, and again, in the interest of time, one of the things that we will help to coach you with is the confrontational part of money, mm -hmm. because we know, uh, and again, the thing, when we started Cairo Destiny, we didn't say you have to practice this way. We'll ask you the questions of what is your dream practice like, and we're going to help you make that dream come true. But for us, we believe in lifetime care and we do year care plans. And again, some of the doctors and CAs were saying, wait a second, how am I going to look someone in the eye and tell them it's $3,000 or $4,000 as a case fee and prepay and all $3,000? Oh my God, that's a lot of money. We help you with that. There's a whole challenge with asking a CA who may be this wonderful, brilliant you know, person that has a job in your office. And now they come up and say, okay, you know, Sally, can you uh, get uh, John Smith started, it's going to be $3,000. And she's like, gulp, I can't ask for that amount of money. Right. Or the doctor even has difficulty. Well, we have analogies for that too, because you don't see a lot of, let's say, neurosurgeons find a brain tumor on a patient, but they don't tell the patient what they really need because insurance may not cover it, or they have to charge them cash. The right. doctor tends to have no problem saying, this is what I found, Mrs. Jones. You got a huge brain tumor. I got to take it out. I'm going to cut your head open tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, you know what? Since your insurance is only going to cover half, I'm only going to remove half the tumor. Yeah. What is that? I don't understand that part, right? So when you it's make cool. it a conversation, now you can have a two-way communication with you and your patient of this is what your choices are here in this office. How would you like to take care of it? well, this is a challenge. I can't do it. My insurance, my, I just lost my job. No problem. Let's see what we can do. You have to have that stuff done in advance. Yeah. And you have to have options available. That's what it comes down to. So we teach you what to say, how to handle, how to handle objections, how to, how to handle them before they even come up in the first place. That's what our expertise lies in that ballpark. Listen, when I, I practice in New York, right? New York is probably, it is ranked the third worst insurance state in the country. Number three, and yet it's probably one of the most expensive states to live in. So I was forced into this because when I started, I was all insurance. And insurance in those days, you know, in the early 90s, were still left, you know, left over from the 80s. So it was still pretty good. Insurances were covering most. And then all of a sudden, by the mid 90s, a couple of years later, insurances went away. All of a sudden, we had all this mangled care coming in and it was covering less and less and less. So I was forced to learn because now my practice is primarily cash. It's about 70 now upwards as much as 80% cash, 20 to 30% insurance. That's it. So I was forced into learning how to deal with this, how to talk to patients and how to really convert a good way without lowering my fee, without giving services away, which I was doing in the beginning because I didn't know any better. And it's a skill set that I learned. And over all these years later, now we teach chiropractors how to do it. So it doesn't matter what kind of practice you are. I don't care if you're 100% cash. I don't care if you're 100% insurance or most people are probably some kind of hybrid um, and my practice, like I said, is predominantly cash, some hybrid with insurance, but most insurances cover very little in New York. So how do we deal with that by telling them what they want to hear, which is, oh, you know, your insurance is going to cover 10 visits a year, maybe eight to 10 visits. That's what it is. But you need 50, 60, 70 visits worth of care. There's a way to do that. There's a way to handle it. There's a way knowing what to say, how to prep for it, giving them a few options. And that's why my close rate is probably 9.5 out of every 10 new patients that walk in my door for a year of care on one of three options, which is they can pay monthly, pay quarterly, they can prepay it. Every state is a little bit different. I'm to tell you to follow your state law. We're going to say it five law. billion times. That's Disclaimer. Right. Exactly. Um, and there are ways to do all that. That's what we help coach you on, but you have to be open to it and you have to learn because if you don't and you continue to do what you've always done and you get the same results, this is why a lot of chiropractors either fail in practice or they just kind of plateau. They don't grow, they get stuck and then they get frustrated. And then when a pandemic hits or something crazy happens, then they really have a problem. 
So you can practice. We want to teach you that you can practice in any environment. If you know what to say and how to handle it, uh, and, and that you had to know how to handle any type of patient that walks in your day, door, no matter who they are, no matter how old they are, it doesn't matter. There's a system for everything. Let us help you and teach you our system and you'll see that it works. Yeah, so in closing, day one procedure, by far the most important visit and a lot of you blow that off because you're so worried about the ROF that you make the day one an okay experience. Let us help you make day one a great experience so it already sells itself. When the patient comes back for day two, they already know they're saying yes. On the day two, let's help you get over the money thing. Let's get you through the scripting thing. It's not about scripts. Anyone can memorize scripts. It's about who you're delivering it to and how. Building rapport and communication skill is, it takes time to learn, but it is learnable. And then making it a systematic conversation that does not take more than 10 minutes on the outskirt, on the outset to get them started. You'll educate them as they go. You'll get them started under care. They're gonna have a wonderful experience. So as you looking for new patient after new patient after, you won't need it. You won't need 50, 60, 70, 80 new patients in a month. It's they're okay to have long. them, but you That's don't- That's amazing. <laughs> but you won't need it because they're staying for 10 times and leaving. That's right. If, you're, if, the, if your PVA is low, that's either because you're an acute care practitioner and that's fine. If that's what you want. want right. Or because no one taught you a proper day one and day two procedure. So people are coming in, they're coming for a few visits. They didn't hear anything you said. They feel better and they leave. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. So again, please uh, contribute uh, to the scholarship for Dr. Tom Platt. Please download the report of findings checklist. Uh, reach out to Brett and I uh, through Cairo Destiny website. Um, you know, I know we constantly say there's nothing we wouldn't do to help a chiropractor, whether you're a member of ours or not, and it's true. Um, but when it comes to this stuff, this is the stuff we take personally because so many of you are struggling and having difficulty growing when we found the, you know, we have the answer, we have the treasure map and we're willing to share. So there's a few linchpins that you just have to know. You just have to become expert at, let us help you do that. By the way, <clears throat> as we come to the close of 2020, it's been a crazy year for everybody from start to finish, absolutely. So as we approach 2021 into a new year, if you want 2021 to be your best year in practice, then you have to be willing to make some changes. You have to be willing to get out of your comfort zone a little bit. And you don't have to do this alone. We have many of our members that work together. We set them up together. We have masterminds together. Let us help you. Let us help you to figure out what is that one stuck point? What's the thing that's holding me back the most? Because if you can break through that, and whatever else might be holding you back, this can be upcoming your best year ever, twice as good as 2020. Uh, beyond your circumstances, obviously, but so many things to learn, so many things to study. You don't have to get overwhelmed by a few things to learn, but you know what? It can be your best year yet if you're willing to step out of your comfort zone, ask for help, make the necessary changes, help more people, help a lot more patients, your community, make more money, have a better life for yourself. It's a win-win for everybody. And that's what we're talking about, right? Okay. Make it a win-win and have your best year ever. Yet, and I think that's what this whole thing is all about. Give us a call and we'd love to help you out. Right, so next week is our last, I think our, I think it's our last live of the year. We may have one after that, right before New Year's. But we love you. Have a great night. We look forward to seeing you again next week with Cairo Destiny on Tuesday Night Live. Take care, everybody.